In the previous lesson, we inherited one data type from another, or to use other terminology, we extended one data type with another. We had a beverage data type, and then we extended that with our coffee data type. And while this inheritance works, and by the way, it works rather well, that doesn't necessarily mean that it is free from any shortcomings. One of those is the syntax. Not only do you have to set up the prototype chain, but you also have to call the parent data types constructor inside of the child constructor. And that is a little weird when you compare it with other object-oriented languages. But honestly, that's minor. It's just a couple of lines of code, and you just get used to doing it. However, as an aside, we are getting classes in ECMAScript 6, which will make this type of inheritance a lot easier. But the bigger issue is code reuse. For example, I've written two data types which are very similar. We have one called person, another called dog. And while in the real world these two types of objects are completely different from one another, there are some things that are similar. For example, a person and a dog can walk, they can run, they can speak. Although you might not be able to understand a dog, it still can speak. But let's set that aside, and let's say that our person and our dog data types both need the same methods for speaking, walking, and running. In traditional class-based object-oriented programming languages, we would just write a lot of classes and inherit one class from another in order to reuse the same functionality. But this is JavaScript. We don't have classes. And even if we did have classes, they wouldn't be your traditional classes because JavaScript is a prototypal language. True inheritance comes from chaining the prototypes together. And for performance reasons, you don't want a long prototype chain that causes extra work on the JavaScript engine. Plus, as we saw in the previous lesson, traditional inheritance in JavaScript really isn't the cleanest code. But we can use the mix-in pattern to make multiple inheritance easy. For example, I'm going to paste in some code. They are two objects. One's called speaker. The other is called mover. And these objects contain methods. The speaker object contains a speak method and the mover object contains a walk and a run method. Now the concept of a mixin is to take an object and mix in the functionality of another object. So in our case, we could take the person.prototype and the dog.prototype and mix in the functionality from the speaker object and the mover object. And we're going to write our own code for mixing in objects. But let's briefly look at jQuery. And in fact, many libraries already have a function or a method that makes mixing in objects rather simple. jQuery has a method called extend, where you supply a target object, let's say person.prototype, and then you can specify multiple objects that you want to use that add functionality to our target object. So for example, we want to add the speaker and the mover functionality to our person. So we could pass speaker and mover. And we could do the same thing for dog.prototype. We would just need to replace person with dog. So let's move these two lines of code to the end of this file. And let's see the results within the browser. Although first, let's create some objects. Let's create one called John equals new person and we'll pass John Doe as the name. And then let's create an object called Fido, where we will new up dog and pass in the name Fido. So now let's go to the browser and let's use these objects with their mixed in functionality. First, let's use John and we should be able to speak. We should also be able to run and walk. Now let's try the same thing with our Fido object. Fido can speak, Fido can run, and Fido can walk although it helps to avoid syntax errors. We can also see that these are the same methods for both our John object and our Fido object. So we could do Fido.run equals John.run, and that will evaluate to true. Now let's go back and let's add another object, because while a person can speak, walk, and run, a person can also perform arithmetic. That is something that will set a person apart from a dog. So when we extend person.prototype, we can also add in the arithmetic object. So mixins make it possible to use the same functionality between different types of objects, or just different objects in general, but it also allows us to define unique functionality for an object or multiple types of objects. So if we go back to the browser, now that we have added the ability to perform arithmetic with our person object, we can call john.add and we see the result. We can also call the multiply method 
and get a result there as well. Now, of course, if we try to use those methods on our Fido object, we are going to get an error because our dog objects do not have a method called add. Now let's write our own function for extending objects. I'm going to copy the jQuery code and paste it in, but then I'm going to comment out one of these sets and I'll get rid of the dollar dot. The function that we are going to write will be called extend. And as far as the parameter list is concerned, it's just going to have one parameter, which we will call target. And inside of the function, we are going to use the arguments object in order to retrieve the source objects, the objects that we are going to take their functions and add it to our target. So first of all, we want to check to see if we have any other arguments. So I'm going to use the arguments object I'm going to use the index of one. If we don't have anything, then we'd simply want to return because we don't have anything to do. But if we do have something, then we want to loop through those arguments. I'm going to create an iterator variable. I call mine ii. This makes it easy to search for these variables. If you call it just i, then you're going to find a lot of i's within your code file. So I'm going to initialize that as one going to create another variable ll for the length of the arguments so arguments.length we want to loop for as long as ii is less than ll then of course we want to increment ii inside of the loop let's create a variable called source and we will set that to arguments with an index of ii and once we have our source object we want to take the properties of the source object and add it to our target we'll use another for loop here but this is going to be a for in loop, so var prop in source. And we only want to copy those properties that are not already within the target object. So if not target prop, and we also want to make sure that this property is directly on our source object. So we are going to use the has own property method. We do not want to copy properties that are on the prototype. And then we will simply set target prop equals source. And that's it. So let's go back to the browser. Let's refresh. And we should see the same results as we got before. Let's make John walk. Let's also make him add some numbers together. Then we can make Fido run and Fido speak. So mixins allow us to decrease the amount of duplication within our code because we are reusing the same functionality between those objects where it makes sense to do so. And while that's definitely a good thing, it does add a certain level of confusion to your code. You are injecting functionality into an object, and it might not always be clear where this functionality comes from. This is more of a problem in large code bases, but some of this confusion can be mitigated by good documentation. So if you do use mixins in your code, document them.